On today's podcast, we do a little bit of a mashup touching on three different topics. First, we talk about hydration and how, even if you are guzzling the water, you actually might be dehydrating yourself in terms of the cellular hydration and why electrolytes are so important for that and how it can make you feel a little less puffy. Then we dive into endocrine disruptors, what they are, just a quick overview and some of our favorite ways to help start swapping for better options. And lastly, we touch on ozempic, ozempic and semaglutide, which are the fad weight loss drugs that are currently on the market and some of the not so fun side effects that they might be bringing. Live your life within the moment, moment, and don't go wait until the morning, morning. You never know when it is over, over. All that I know is Happy Monday. It yes. is crazy. August is tomorrow. I know. And August is the beginning of the end of my life because I have so many things going on in August. We have my birthday's the second, Carson's the seventh. We're doing, oh, by the way, don't let me forget, I have a I need to um, give you the invitation for Marcus for okay. Carson's birthday. Um, okay. We're doing a f- school birthday party, hopefully on Isn't the 5th. Taylor's birthday also coming here She's too? the 20th. Okay. Um, we ha- I'm organizing a block party that's I on the 12th. That. I saw that. And then we go on vacation for like a long weekend in Ozarks, Branson area the next weekend from the 17th to the 21st. You're going to July. And then September, we have Nick's birthday. We have a wedding in Jersey. And then October, we have another wedding in Michigan. Nice. And I was trying to maybe plan a trip to Vegas. <laughs> in September, <laughs> yeah, to which you. I don't think is going to happen. You have to tell me about that. Yeah, we. Uh, so we have our trip, and then Art and I were talking. We're going somewhere, depending on my recovery, probably end of September, beginning of October. Yeah, just the two of us. Yeah, we're that's overdue we're for two, two of us. So, yeah. anyways, <laughs> we. Uh, and then all of a sudden, it's going to be the holidays. <gasps> And then it's going to be 2024. Oh my God. So where are you at with your goals? This is a good time to analyze what have you been doing in 2023? Where are we at with our goals? What do we want to accomplish in the last five months of the year? Insane. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to dive into today is a little bit of a mashup. We like to do these. We get a lot of questions from our Instagram. We get a lot of questions uh, sometimes through email and some common trends. And so what we're going to kick it off today is with understanding why water alone is not going to hydrate you. Okay. And why electrolytes are so important to getting the water intracellularly so that your body can utilize it appropriately. So imagine a balloon with a good amount of air, a balloon can float and appear pleasingly plump right? But pumping out the air inside can cause it to shrivel and therefore it's not going to be floating anymore. But if you punch too much air into a balloon, what happens? It stresses the rubber and it burst. Pop. The same analogy applies to hydration and electrolytes. So like the balloon, your skin looks vibrant. Your bodies function optimally when we have adequate amounts of water in the body. And when you work out with, you know, your gym buddies or whatever you're doing for your workouts, you lose water and you lose electrolytes through your sweat. This is normal. This is how God designed us and that should happen this way for cellular turnover, regeneration and things like that. But if you lose more water than you take in, so let's say it's really hot outside, it's mid-August and you're doing a CrossFit workout, you're losing a ton of electrolytes in your sweat. So now imagine that those cells have shriveled up So you feel dizzy, you feel lightheaded, you feel extremely thirsty maybe. So in this situation, water alone does not rehydrate you. Take this analogy and transfer it to your colon if you're somebody who is constipated. The longer that your stool sits in your colon, it becomes drier and drier and it's going to be harder and harder to pass. And so this is really important because at a cellular level and within the colon to get water to move where it needs to be with all of the different organs, you've got to have electrolytes. Electrolytes are going to allow water to fill those cells, make the balloon nice and plump like we want it. And this will help you maintain optimal fluid balance within the body. And what we see a lot of times for people when we introduce electrolytes into them, because we can see even from blood work if your electrolytes are imbalanced. And here we're talking about things like sodium, potassium, magnesium that they lose a lot of inflammation because they're now hydrated intracellularly. So they don't look as puffy on the outside. So one easy way to assess this is your urine color. You don't want it to be clear. You want it to be kind of a pale yellow and every drink that you have 
throughout the day, almost every drink should have some sort of electrolytes. You get electrolytes, you know, from your food as well. But if you're eating a really clean diet, let's say more Mediterranean style eating or paleo anti-inflammatory whole 30, whatever you want to call it here, you are not going to be getting enough sodium. And this is where we love our element packets. I drink two to three a day. Becca drinks mm-hmm. what, three to four today right now. I'm mostly three. Yeah. yeah. I drink three every day. So that's all very, very clean. Um, we have a link in the show notes that gets you a free sample pack with any purchase. And this is about a half a box actually within that sample pack. Mm-hmm. So it's a pretty good deal. Uh, what we would want to stay away from are electrolytes that are really high in sugar. Now, the exception here would be somebody who is an athlete, a true athlete, and maybe you're yeah. using Gatorade or something like that to replenish or intra workout type thing. But you want to stay away from a lot of the artificial, like really crappy electrolytes that have just a lot of artificial flavoring, sucralose or anything, OSE, fructose, things like that. So the element is very, very clean. It's sodium, potassium, magnesium, and the natural flavors with stevia. Grapefruit is by far, my, I think it's my favorite. Yeah, absolutely. Grapefruit and watermelon are my two favorites. Mm-hmm. And Same. yeah, my daughter has now mama water, mama water. And oh. so I'll give her like a fourth of a packet in her water. Um, so, salt wawa. That's awesome. I know. It's so cute. Drink and it she up, gets girl. super, she gets flush when she's outside. And so like, yeah. I think she has probably, you know, children are actually, children and older people are much more prone to like heat stroke. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely have no, no qualms about giving her a little bit of the element tea. Yeah. I've tried Marcus. I've gotten him to have certain flavors, mm-hmm. certain flavors he doesn't like. Cause he's like, ew, that's salty. But, um, if I dilute it enough for him, he does, uh, I think I got him to do raspberry last week or sometimes I just sneak in a little bit with like a juice. Yep. So yep. anyways, yeah. so there's your electrolytes talk you for need the day. Them, and they can actually help with blood sugars too. Yep. So, because obviously they make the cell like when a cell is hydrated, it is much healthier. And like Liz was saying, there's plenty of people that you need hydration to, to be able to lose weight eventually. And so a lot of times you basically have different levels of hydration as an adult female, you should be able to reach about 50 to 55% hydration, meaning about 50 to 55% of your body is water. People that are unhealthy, people that are overweight have lower hydration levels. So you might be only like 40% water. You can, you can understand this if you ever do like a, um, an in-body scan or a DEXA scan or anything like that. It tells you how much of your weight is water. And what we see a lot of times is as we get people healthier, the cells healthier, we bring electrolytes in, we get them hydrated. Like Liz was saying, they look leaner and leaner because the water is getting intracellular. It's no longer just sitting outside the cell making you look all puffy. And so when you finally get up to that full hydration level, that's when the weight tends to start dropping a little bit more regularly. Um, So just another side note. (laughs) So the next thing that we wanted to talk about were endocrine disruptors. So this is a kind of a broad topic and it can be very overwhelming. And so we wanted to kind of break it down into some common ones where you're exposed to them and then some alternatives that you can put in place in terms of, you know, skincare, hair care, some of our favorites. We also love the Yuka app. Um, you can scan things. Although I realized I was trying to scan a detergent the other day. It doesn't have detergents in there. Really? Yeah. Very upsetting. Yuka. I just use the detergent from Do Better Thrive. Yuka. Yeah, I've used that before too. I haven't ordered as much from Thrive lately. It became a problem. <laughs> it became a problem? I was ordering so much stuff from there. Um, well, the Flackers, literally this past week with the sale they had, mm-hmm. which is moons ago. So sorry, guys. Stay tuned for the next sale. I'll always share it with you because I love Thrive. Yeah. Flackers, three ingredients, flax seeds, apple cider vinegar, and salt. I don't know how they do it. They're really good. I'll let you taste one later. Yeah. They're really freaking good. So that turned into me stocking up for a lot of things. And then my husband's like, we don't need any more condiments. We don't need any more <laughs> snacks for Marcus. Have you seen? And I was like, no, I just ordered $120 from Thrive. But it's like, um, I do it So anyways, <laughs> you can use the Yuka app. You can also look at the EWG, the Environmental Working Group, for some of this stuff. But endocrine, endocrine disruptors are basically harmful chemicals that can be found in food, water, a lot of consumer products. They disrupt the hormonal system. Endocrine equals hormones. So like your endocrinologist, they work on hormones, thyroid, you know, autoimmune conditions, stuff like that. So that can lead to a wide range of very important (laughs) health issues, Uh, developmental, reproductive, brain dysfunction, immune system issues, and some are associated with higher risks of cancer and organ damage. So it is kind of almost impossible to avoid all of them. 
but you can slowly swap yours. And this is meant to empower you. We've done a whole podcast on this. We do not want to fear monger, but we want to go through some of the big ones. So pesticides are a huge one. I mean, we know Roundup. I hopefully, hopefully that is world knowledge by this point. If you go back to one of our episodes, uh, you can learn about glyphosate. We did a whole episode on glyphosate. Yeah. I yell at Nick all the time. If I see him trying to use any type of like weed killer, I'm like, what's in that? Because our children face plant on the grass all the time. <laughs> yeah, we don't use anything on our grass. And I've really tried not to use it. We had a couple places we just had to. Um, but instead, I just keep pulling my nasty dandelions. They're big, those monsters. I know. So pesticides are chemicals that are used in agriculture to control pests. I've actually seen a video recently that they're starting to use lasers instead of pesticides, well. like chemicals. Um, interesting. We'll, we'll continue to see how that pans out. Uh, but washing your fruits and vegetables. I ordered one of the ozone things. It's like a six to eight week delivery time. Oh, you'll get it faster. And they okay. told me the same thing and I got it within like two weeks. Okay. It's been like four weeks. Oh, okay. yeah. But anyways, I'm waiting on it. Um, so the ozone, <laughs> there's also things that you can do in terms of baking soda and water mm-hmm. mixtures. I don't know the exact combination, but you can Google like homemade fruit and vegetable, you know, detoxifier. I don't know the name of what the you wash. Would yeah like a vegetable wash. You can basically put them in a bowl and you see them bubble. Um, But common exposures are non-organic foods, dust, surface and drinking waters, weed killers, air pollution, and then parks and soccer fields tend to be kind of high because of how much they use to kind of keep them cleaner. Um, So if you are constantly at the soccer field with your child, just something to consider. Um, You know, it can be a high exposure for you. Phthalates are another one, um, and these are in plastics. These are really common in personal care products like makeup, hair um, hair care products, stuff like that. Some food packaging too. Um, minimizing exposure by opting for phthalate-free products, avoiding plastic, plastics, uh, using glass or stainless steel containers instead of plastic, especially for hot foods. We talk about this a lot. If you're doing any type of like food prep, you want to use glass to put hot food in. So I often, if I don't, I have a lot of plastic containers, but what I'll do is I'll put it in a bowl and let it cool and then I'll put it in the plastic container because I always put it back in a bowl to reheat it. Um, So you can be exposed to phthalates through sunscreen. Dryer sheets are a very common exposure. Um, Diapers, soap, carpeting, food packaging, air fresheners, nail polish. I'm sorry, I will never give it up. Plastic wrap, synthetic fragrances, Clothing, so like flame retardant clothing too, um, cosmetics, shampoo, toys, baby care products. I know particularly Target has those big yellow tags for kids' clothes. Those are you. Those are use flame retardants. Mm. So those you want to avoid. avoid. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've always like wondered. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if there's. I mean, here's the thing: if my child's on fire, <laughs> I'm not really concerned. I don't know. I mean, like. I don't think the clothing is going to be the big, the big ticket to save them. Uh, that's what I was just thinking. Like, yeah, I just, I guess I would need to know more and understand more. Maybe we're just not thinking about I think about it's in something. like the production of it. Right. But yeah. like just what they're doing that as a sales tactic is like, say this is going to prevent your baby from catching on fire if there's a fire, but the bigger issue, don't let, don't let there be let your baby fire. Get on, fi- like, get on fire. I saw this mom, this like meme the other day that was like moms in moms groups be like, so my baby accidentally rolled off the counter on top of a steak knife and is running in 108 fever. Is it safe to give the mad villain Tylenol right now? And like, it was just was this whole thing. And I was like, how about you just, you know, keep an eye on your kid, make sure they're okay. Accidents happen sometimes, but like, yep. don't let them play with fire. Taylor totally had a steak knife the other day because she plays in the sink a lot. And I try my best oh, girl. to keep eyes around what's around the sink when she's playing there. It's happened too many times. <laughs> Yes, I would be concerned, especially with Taylor. (laughs) Um, All right, so let's talk about heavy metals, all right? And this is a big one, especially when it comes to fish, making sure that you are getting wild-caught fish and not sustainably farm-raised. Okay, farm-raised is going to have a lot more mercury. Um, But things here are we looking at lead, mercury, cadmium, arsenic. They can all be present, not just in the environment, um, but also, again, in our food because they're added to things, um, as well as certain consumer products. So fish, especially large fish, 
salmon, for example, you're going to even notice the coloring. If you look at the ingredients on a farm raised fish, you're going to see that there's multiple ingredients and they add color to make it look fresh. No bueno. On the wild caught, you're going to see that it says salmon. One ingredient. Okay. Silver fillings and dental material. Go back and listen to the podcast that we did with Dr. Cody, the dentist. That was a really good one. Mm -hmm. Making sure that if you do have amalgam fillings, when you're getting them removed, you're doing it with a dentist that knows what they're doing. Um, dust, toys, prepackaged baby food, metals, soil, paint, treated wood, certain supplements, fungicides, canned food, batteries, pesticides, drinking water. I don't think we need to hound. If you're new to the podcast, go back and listen to other things. Please do not be drinking tap water, pharmaceuticals, air pollution, and some juices. Those are a few. BPAs. This is a chemical in plastics. I think a lot of people know about this more mm -hmm. than ever, but uh, can linings, right? So if you have canned food, the lining uh, in those cans, thermal paper receipts as well, all of these mimic estrogen and can contribute to hormonal issues. So a lot of times when we see somebody really, really high with estrogen, this is a big part of their protocol, going through their house, doing a clean sweep, being very mindful, email the receipt. A lot of places have options to email the receipt. Email the receipt to you. Uh, if they do hand it to you, throw it away as fast as you can. <laughs> um, choose BPA products. One thing to consider is when we're talking about filtered water, plastic water goes through heat changes. That plastic, even though it's BPA free, things are still going to seep into that water that we just don't want. Um, and so we recommend using stainless steel or glass containers. I just got a new fancy water bottle from the coldest. That's the brand. Um, they have an app. If you sign up for the app, you get a discount. Um, my sister didn't realize that. She's like, what the hell? I didn't save $20, but uh, the coldest and it's stainless steel. I really like it. it also fits your cup holder. Um, so that was a big thing for me because we both have used like a lot of the plastic cups. And again, my water doesn't get hot, but in the summertime, when it has gotten really hot here, I'm taking those things into consideration. And again, just avoiding microwaving uh, food in plastic containers. So outside of this, look around at other things that are in your house, kitchen utensils and equipment, um, plastic wrap storage bags, things like that, soda, tea bags, all kinds of things. Yeah. So these matter. Everything matters when we talk about the rain barrel effects or the, mm -hmm. you know, the bucket analogy, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Oh, you know, my moisturizer that I love so much. I'll let that slide. There are things that I do let slide. My dip, I'm not going to give up my nails. I'm not going to give up my dip. But everything else, I would say besides that, I mean, with Frey, I use um, Frey skincare. I use Thrive Cosmetics, right? There's a lot of things that you can do, even food-wise. A lot of processed foods that you can find that don't have a lot of these additives and preservatives to help reduce and minimize the exposure to these things. Mm -hmm. So the last thing that we wanted to talk on is Ozempic or also known as semaglutide. So Ozempic is the big weight loss drug lately. Magic. Uh, it's magic. It's magic. So how does it work? After you eat, basically Ozempic stimulates the pancreas to release insulin and blocks a hormone that causes your liver to release sugar. So you lower your blood sugar levels. You could also just work on your blood sugar levels, but I digress. Um, you could fix your androgen you could issue. fix the androgen issue that's probably causing it. Um, you could manage all of the other inflammation issues that are driving insulin resistance. That seems too hard, Becca. I don't, I don't want to do that. I, don't, I just want to lose 10 pounds. <laughs> what happens when you don't lose 10 pounds, but you're still taking the med? That means there is a lot of shit going on that you have not dealt with. I see... I see people go on this medication and not lose weight because there's too much underlying inflammation. And the thing is, is that you cannot stay on this medication forever. And when you come off of this medication, you still have the problems, but now you have a bigger problem because when, and research shows this on Ozempic, you tend to lose more body fat. muscle mass than you do fat. Oh yeah. Muscle mass. And so when you come off of it, I believe it was something upwards of 70 to 80% of people gain the weight back that they lost. I don't know the exact percentage. I'd have to look it up, but I'm pretty sure it was around there. But you gain fat back. You do not gain the muscle back. So now you are more fat 
even if you come back to the same weight, you are now more fat than you were before. And all the while you have less, you're burning less because you have less muscle mass. You're burning less at your just like baseline. Yeah. So the big thing that we wanted to talk about though, is the side effects of Ozempic because it's actually, you guys, here's the thing. When there's a new drug that comes out that seems amazing, there also has not been a ton of research long-term on it and how it starts to affect other systems within the body. Because there is nothing that comes without consequence. Nothing. Dieting, health work, drugs, prescriptions, whatever. Nothing comes without consequence. You are affecting some part of the body and other parts are going to get affected. So Zempic is actually currently under investigation for suicide risk. So the EU's drug regulator has opened a probe into reports that Ozempic and Sagsenda, Sagsenda, I think, Mm -hmm. um, basically things containing semaglutide or liraglutide are linked to thoughts of suicide and self-harm based on three incidents in Iceland. They are also considering other drugs in the same class, which are amongst the most popular and made by, you know, the big pharma companies. They already contain a warning for suicidal behavior, even though clinical trials of the drug did not find it elevated as a risk, but they're seeing it as a potential side effect. So some other side effects include thyroid tumors, pancreatitis, changes in vision, hypoglycemia, gallbladder issues, because when you lose weight too rapidly and it's not good weight loss, which is, does not happen rapidly, you put a lot of stress on your gallbladder, kidney failure, and cancer. So there's always a cost. You want fast weight loss? Here's the medication. There's a cost, right? There's a, um, I mean, side effects, right? Or I'm I'm blanking on the word that I'm looking for. Consequences. Consequence. Yeah. Thank you. Um, It's the same thing with somebody in a PPI, right? I have heartburn and acid reflux. I'm going to take a PPI to get rid of the symptoms, but the consequences are suppressed stomach acid, poor nutrient absorption, which leads to many, many other things. Mal, you know, you're not getting all of the vitamins and minerals. You're not assimilating nutrients right now. Your neurotransmitters are off. And there's so many other things that all of these things do in terms of your thyroid function, your hormones because of the PPI, the cascading effects of that. So there's always a consequence. And so we've gotten a lot of questions uh, about what are your thoughts on semiglutide? Do you think it's safe to use, you know, temporarily things like that? Listen, it's not everybody. Not everything is everybody, but do your research before you just accept a drug or a vaccination or anything that you're putting into your body related to what the side effects could be. Now, that said, there are supplements that we use regularly and there are things that, okay, side effects are very, very rare, but we're using supplements targeted and specific that are quality tested that have passed various um companies in terms of their ratings and their quality and they're continuing to quality test. By the way, I haven't told you this, Becca, but now supplements is here in Chicago. I want to go tour them. Oh. They run 1900 tests every single week on their products to verify quality. That's, you know, one that we use. It's not even the highest grade of things. So it's important to know we've seen this, um, too, with, for example, thyroid medication that if you're using an off brand, so let's say you had a, uh, a prescription for level thyroxine, but you went with an off brand or a generic because of insurance. I've had a couple of clients where when it was refilled, it wasn't actually what they needed or at the level. And so thyroid was thrown off. So it's really important just to know what you're taking in general. So we thought we'd just throw this one in there, slide it in for you today. We get that you want to lose weight, but guys, your health is more important. Wouldn't it be worth working on yourself for a year getting the weight off, but also fixing all of the underlying issues in the body and maintaining that weight loss. I've maintained a 50 pound weight loss now for almost 10 years. One of my clients said to me the other day, cause she's known me since uh, Art and I met, she goes, you've shown me that it's possible. And that's why I want to do it the right way. I don't want to do the things I've done in the past with HCG and other things. Sure. It might work for you. You might get the weight off, but as Becca is saying, if you rebound, if you're part of that 70% or maybe even it's even higher, because some people don't admit that they're on these things, mm-hmm. right? Just something for you to consider today. 
Put in the work because the work is always going to need to be done. Nobody skirts around it and gets around it. Maybe you get an, a hall pass or an easy pass, a quick fix, but you still got to work hard on the other side then to fix all of the things that have now been damaged because of the things that you chose to put in your body. And this includes peds. It includes a lot of other things, not just Ozempic. So food for thought today with that. We hope you guys are having a fantastic start to your week. Happy Monday. Happy August tomorrow. And we'll be back on Wednesday.